Okay. Hi friends, welcome to Get Your Play Online. My name is Sarah Rose and today for our Get Moving, we're going to be playing a fun game of Fish Target Toss. Now this is a great game for my friends who are in elementary school, who are in preschool, or my friends who aren't in school yet. This is a good game for practicing using those muscles that we use in our arms for throwing. So this game is it's kind of how it sounds. We're going to be making a target and with our little fishes that we make out of sponges, we're going to practice aiming at a target. So my friends, before we get started, I wanted to let you know that you can do this inside or outside. So I live in an apartment and I don't really have a backyard that I can go to and the sidewalk is really far away. So today I'm gonna to be doing it inside. If you are going to be doing it outside, make sure that you're in a safe area away from cars or traffic and make sure that a grown up is out there with you, making sure that you're staying safe. If you're inside, I recommend doing this activity on hard floor, floor that looks kind of like mine or floor that you may find in your kitchen or bathroom that's called tile. It's easier to put the tape down on tile or hardwood floor than the carpet. And these sponges that we're going to be using, we're going to get them wet. And for me, it's easier to clean up the hard floors with a paper towel than it is for me to clean up the carpet because then you've got to kind of pat down the wet spot and it takes a really long time to dry. <laughs> also, if you're doing this inside, make sure that it's okay with your parents to be throwing wet sponges around the house. We don't want anyone slipping and falling, and we don't want to make a mess if it if yeah, we don't want to make too big of a mess if we aren't supposed to be throwing wet stuff in the house. So, with all that said, what you're going to need for this activity, you're going to need some plain kitchen sponges that look like this and they don't have anything on the back. It just makes it easier to cut. If you do not have a sponge, this is an activity where we're going to work with what we've got. So you can take a really small towel or a washcloth and you're just going to kind of ball up the top and take a rubber band or a hair tie and kind of put it just around here. To me, this looks kind of like an octopus. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think. Kind of a stretch, but <laughs> if you don't have sponges, this is a great way to still play the game with us. You're going to need, if you are inside, you're going to need some painter's tape. It's this kind of blue tape that you may see grownups using when they're painting. It's just really easy to put it on and it's easy to take off the floor when we're done. If you are doing this outside, uh, you'll need some chalk. You're going to need a bucket of water. I don't have a bucket, so I'm going to be using just a Tupperware container that's pretty big. So again, make do with what you've got. You'll just need something to hold the water kind of close to you at the starting line for when we're tossing our fish. You may want to keep some towels handy in case things get really wet because we don't want anyone slipping or falling. And you'll need some scissors. So kitchen scissors work best. You can use other types of scissors. But if you are not comfortable using scissors or still are practicing, get a grown up to help you. We don't want anyone to get hurt while making our fish for our game. So again, if you need help using scissors, please, please, please don't be afraid to ask. 
and you'll need, if you want to kind of draw the shape of your fish, you may want a marker. Um, and besides that, you're gonna need something to keep score. So this is my scoreboard. It's just a piece of paper and I'll use that marker. If you are playing this outside, a good alternative is to just use that piece of chalk and you can off to the side, write your scores in chalk on the sidewalk. So my friends, I think that's it. We've got our supplies. I think we're ready to get started. We're gonna first set up our game. So the way I've set up my game is I've made three different squares. I'll show you on the ground here. Let's see, and I'll stand in each one. So this one is kind of bigger than the others and it's worth one point. So if you throw your fish and it lands in this box, you get one point. And then a little farther away from the starting line is a box worth five points. And then the one that's farthest away from that starting line across the way, this is worth 10 points. So I have my three squares. One, my second square that's worth five points. And then my furthest square away is worth 10 points. So my friends, for our starting line, you're going to, once you make your first box, you're going to count five big steps backwards. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, and then you're gonna draw a line where your feet land. So this is where my feet are. So I've got my line right here. You're going to make a second line where you take two extra big steps, big steps back. One, two. So this is my second line. It's even further away for an extra challenge. So you're going to be setting up your game area with two lines. One is really far away. The other one is a little bit closer. And then take five steps from that line. Make your first box worth one point. Second box, second box, which is worth five points and your last box, which is worth 10 points. It may be backwards. <laughs> so another way that you can make your target instead of doing those boxes is you can make three big circles. So we've got our first circle, another one in the middle, and then an even smaller one in the center. And we'll get those kind of similar points. So the biggest circle on the outside is worth one point. So this outside circle is worth one point just because it's a little bit bigger. You've got more room for your fishies to <laughs> find their way. And then the middle one is gonna be worth five points. And then the circle in the center is gonna be worth 10. So my friends, I'm going to give you a few minutes to get your board set up. And while you're getting your board set up, I'm gonna be sharing with you some really fun fish jokes that I found. Let me know which one is your favorite, which one made you laugh the hardest and I'll see if I can hear that laughter from all the way over here. <laughs> what do you get when you cross fish and an elephant? Any guesses? Swimming trunks. Get it? <laughs> Cause elephants have trunks. <laughs> I thought that was a good one. Why don't oysters share their pearls? 
because they're shellfish. Get it? Instead of selfish, selfish, it's shellfish. <laughs> Very good. All right, my friends, only three more jokes. What do you call a fish with no eye? This one's a good one. Fish, fish. <laughs> Get it? Fish is spelled F-I-S-H. Without the I, it's just psh. <laughs> Two more. How do you get an oyster to a hospital? In a clambulance. Instead of an ambulance. <laughs> All right, and this one is my favorite one. What's the difference between a piano and a fish? You can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish. Get it, tune a fish. <laughs> Oh man, I crack myself up. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed those jokes and I hope you guys have had enough time to get your board situated. If you are still working on that, that's totally fine. You take your time. So for my friends that have their board set up, we're going to start making our fish with our sponges. Again, if you don't have sponges, use a hair tie or a rubber band and a washcloth to make kind of this octopus and it'll work just the same. So we're going to kind of draw a fish. I'll draw it first, just so you can kind of see what we're doing. But you make your best fish shape. You want it to be kind of big. So I'm doing just like kind of rounded edges here. And then fish to me have kind of triangle-ish fins at the end. So once that's drawn, either you or a grown up, if you are not comfortable with scissors or you're still practicing, are going to cut out our fish. Sponges are kind of tough to cut. So if it takes you a little bit, that's okay. There we go. We have our fish. So this, that's how you make a fish out of your sponge. And again, your fish can be whatever shape you want. There are so many different types of fish in the sea. So if your fish doesn't look exactly like mine, that's totally okay. I also wanted to show you how we can make a little jellyfish or octopus out of our sponge. If you like, octopus, an octopus more than a fish, or if you just want something different. So an octopus, I'm going to draw like a little circle, just a little round area here. There, so I'll just cut off these corners and then make like a little triangle here. Just cut that little triangle. I know this week we've been talking about under the sea, but I want to know, do any 
of you guys out there have a pet fish that lives in a tank in your house? Some people have, I had a goldfish growing up. I wonder if other people would have that. All right, my friends, so once we've got the basic shape of our octopus, we're going to cut kind of skinny triangles out of our sponge. And it doesn't matter what those triangles look like, as long as you give, as long as you put enough space between the triangles, so it kind of looks like legs. Again, if you're not using scissors, what you can do is you can draw the fish on your sponge and have your grown up cut it out for you. That's another way of doing it. There's my little octopus. I think he looks cute. Again, octopuses come in all octopi. Yeah, octopi. They come in all shapes and sizes. So if yours does not look exactly like mine, that's totally okay. You're going to want to make either, um, you're going to want to make between three and six of these in total. So you can have two fish and an octopus. You can have three fish. You can have six fish. Just make sure that you've got enough sponges for at least, or you've got at least three sponges cut out. Or if you're using washcloths, make sure you've got three washcloths on hand. So my friends, I think we're ready to get started. So I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna take my fish, I'm gonna take my Tupperware bowl, fill it with some water. I'm going to take it to my starting line. I'm going to be starting from the line that's closest to the boxes. So not this one all the way back here, this one that's a little closer. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our sponges wet. I'm just squeezing out a little bit of the water. And with our wet sponge, we're going to underhand or overhand toss our fish and try to land in one of the boxes. Let's see. Three, two, one, go! Oh, I landed in kind of. Here, I'll show you so you can see. It's like a little bit in the tent. The tail is in the tent. Good job, my friends. I also want to say if you are playing this either inside or outside, make sure that you're trying to aim for the target and make sure that you've got plenty of space because we don't want our wet sponges to be knocking over things and all that jazz. All right, so I've got one fish on the board. Let's see, now I've got our pink fish. This one's a little smaller, so I wonder how that'll change things. Ready, set, go! Oh, again, it landed right in the middle of the five and the ten. Here, look. How silly. That time the head. The head landed in the ten. All right, I'm on that last fish. Ready, set, go! We got it directly on the tent! Great job, good job. All right, my friends, so you're going to throw three fish at a time. And if you're playing with friends or siblings or other people, you're going to go one at a time and take turns. Each one, each person's gonna get three fish to throw. So I don't have anyone playing with me in person. Yeah, I have you guys playing with me, of course. So I threw three fish all in a row. 
But if it was playing with someone else, we would take turns. So my friends, let's see. I got I got three fish in the ten. Even if you have a little bit of your fish on the target, that still counts. So I got ten, three fish on the ten. So can you tell me how many points did I get? What's my total? What was that? 30, that's right, very good. So I got 30 points for that round. Very exciting. All right, my friends, now for our next round, we are going to be going to the really far line. So not the line that we were originally at. So I'm going to take my bucket and move it to my second one. So I'm a little further back now. All right, my friends, I'm getting my first sponge ready. And let's count down together. Three, two, one, go. It landed in the five. All right, I'm gonna do my pink fish now. Let's time, let's count up. We'll go one, two, three. Ready? One, two, three. That one made it in the five too. All right, my friends, this is my last fish. All right, my friends. This time we'll say ready, set, go. Ready, set, go. That one landed in a five too. I got all tens and then I got all fives in this round. See? All right, my friends, so let's tally up our score. So I got three fish. on the five. So now, what are three fives together? What does this equal? Hmm. 15, that's right, great job. 15. All right, my friends, now we're going to do something super, super, super tricky. We are going to throw our fish with our eyes closed. I know, I know. Remember kind of where your target is and try to be really careful. Make sure the area around you is clear and you're not going to accidentally hit something or knock something over. So, I'm going to go to the line that's closest to the squares. So, the line where we did round one in. I'm going to gather my fish. Move my water. All right. All right, my friends, I'm closing my eyes. Ready? Set, go. Oh, I didn't land in any boxes. How silly. All right, I'm doing my next one. Closing my eyes. Ready, set, go. Oh, I didn't land in any boxes either. <laughs> All right, my friends, last one. Closing my eyes. Ready. Set. Go. Oh, I didn't get any. Oh my goodness. So, here I can show you. No fishies. All right, my friends. So, let's tally up my score. So my 
friends, this is my score for the last round. What is zero plus zero plus zero? Zero, I know. But that is okay, my friends. It's okay. I had a lot of fun and I hope you guys had a lot of fun too. So can you tell me, this was round one. We were on the line that was five steps away. This was round two where we were seven steps away. So it was a little farther away than the first one. And then this round, I closed my eyes. Which round did I do the best in? I did the best when the line was closest. Very good. Which one did I do the worst in? Or was not, not my best? Definitely this one. So when you're aiming for a target, it really, really helps to be able to see where your target is. That way you can kind of match how your hand should move. But again, a lot of that is also practicing. So my friends, if this was kind of difficult, don't worry, practice makes perfect. And I hope you had a lot of fun getting to make your fish and getting to play with some water too. So my friends, thank you so much for joining our fishy game. Let me know and let us know in the comments which round was best for you. Was it better to be closer to the targets? Did you do the best with your eyes closed? Let us know. And thank you again so, so much for joining us today. Thanks so much for joining us for our Under the Sea Week. I hope that you guys have had a lot of fun with our crafts and our activities this week. And I hope you guys come back for some more fun next week. So my friends, until then, take care and have a great rest of your day and a great weekend. Bye friends.